Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals, but let me get a sip of my water first. My radio voice going on, let's talk about this. All right, I've started doing a little more rest pause training in my training, stuff I used to do a long time ago, years ago. I am messing with it a little bit again, but I want to be clear when we discuss this topic that this is not something that you should be doing large amounts of and I don't think the benefits to it are particularly robust. So we, we need to be clear on this. I think muscle failure generally stimulates all the possible adaptations you're going to get out of a set. I don't think a lot of these intensity methods do very much else. Okay. I think that sometimes some of them can be useful just to be sure that you actually got uh, the deeper muscle fibers that you kind of got to failure. Um, and I think it's really useful, for example, on exercises to where you don't feel safe going to failure. So bench press, All right? On the bench press, like when I did some today, I did two rest pause reps. I racked it twice and then did another rep on my very last set. So why, why might we do that? Um, to make sure that we actually lift the full weight. Um, I will go so far as to say that any rep in which a spotter helps you with doesn't count. You're probably not doing anything. Completely useless rep in terms of, of stimulus. So if a spotter reaches up and helps you lift, um, I personally just wouldn't count it. Mainly because we've reduced the load, we've reduced tension. Okay, We have not kept the same tension on the bar as soon as they help or touch it. Even worse when they touch anything out of the bottom of a rep. I mean, we can excuse a lockout. Like if you're really grinding through a lockout, you can't lock a weight, but you came out of the bottom clean. Okay, we reached muscle failure if, if the spotter has to touch it. No problem. If they tap anything out of the bottom, I wouldn't count that rep at all. Not for hypertrophy purposes. So if you do a 10 rep set of dumbbells and they help you lift it on every single rep, I, as a coach, would count it as zero reps. I would count it as a set that didn't do anything. It probably didn't stimulate much, much muscle growth because we skipped the hardest part of the exercise. We skipped the most beneficial part of the exercise. You probably should have just used lighter dumbbells and not had the spotter touch it, and you probably would have got a more robust training response. So I want to be clear on stuff like that. I think the difference when it comes to something like that is, let's say, on the bench press. Um, I'm training alone. I don't want to have to roll out from under the, the pins. Like, I have safety pins so that I can't get hurt. I don't particularly like having the weight bounce on the pins, okay? It's hard on your equipment. It can be hard on your joints. And then I got to do the roll of shame. So what might we do there? If I don't want to go to muscle failure and I want to get real close, I'll do some, you know, the last rep where it feels a little grindy, a little slow. I don't know that I can get another rep. That's when we might want to rack it. Because we, we haven't necessarily hit muscle failure, we've gotten close, but we can't always know for sure that we, we didn't have one more rep, okay? Maybe we could have. So if I rack it and rest just a few seconds and then do one more rep, at least I know that I got the same quality of stimulus that we got to those last little bit of muscle fibers, the upper threshold fibers, fatigued them, recruited them, did what we need to do, right? It's a valuable tool in that context, okay? Particularly on a final set. Um, I think today I also did them on some other stuff. I did it on chins. Uh, you know, so what did I do with my chin ups today? I only did one rest pause, all right. So what did I do? I had to grind through my last rep and I, the last rep was really hard. I knew for a fact it was all that I had. It almost, I almost didn't want to count the rep. On my third set, I let go of the bar, rested a few seconds, jumped up and did one more rep. For me, that was technically a PR because the last time that the best I've done on chins, I've done three sets of 10 with a 45 pound plate. Keep in mind, I weigh 220 and then this is shoes and everything else on two. So three by 10, I failed last time on rep 11. I could not get out of the bottom. So by me doing that, I kind of pushed just a little bit of a rep PR. Again, 
by using a little bit of an intensity technique. Now, is it probably worth a lot in terms of muscle growth? No, because I was pretty much at muscle failure on, on the last rep. Again, this is just a way to push a set a little bit further. And I don't recommend you do it on multiple sets for exercise. You know, people who try to do this multiple sets. I can promise you, you can even replicate the performance. So let's say, for example, uh, you get 10 reps on an exercise, and then you do some rest pause reps, and then you're able to get 10 reps again on that exercise later, there is no way you were close to failure. You, you shouldn't have even done the rest pause. My thing that when it comes to these sort of techniques, they will beat your recovery up if you're not careful. I think there's something that should be used sparingly, okay? No more than one set per exercise. It's something that can be useful on your final set. Be very useful on your very on your last set. So so that's what I did today on bench. I, I did a reverse pyramid with it. I did 315, dropped down to, to 275, and then I did a 225 really high rep set. Right? Got it to, till it was just fatigued and burning, and then did the, the couple rest pause. You know, the same thing on the chance. I did my three sets of 10, and then I did one rep. <clears throat> we did one rep. Then I did the same thing on my last set of curls, kind of did the same thing on my last set of laterals. I really, I almost kind of did it on pullovers. Uh, so, you know, again, you're looking at maybe one set of exercise. But when you go back and look at how we trained, I've made some of those videos about way back in the day of how we trained with the rest pause squats. Like that was really common. But it do need to be clear that fatigued you. Like that fatigued you, you didn't come in, we didn't do like five sets of squats if we did that. So when we used to do the, the, those Widowmaker squats, we did one set, and that set might take two minutes. It might take three minutes to do. But that's how we did use to train. Um, and we were kind of taught when I was starting out that this is just the way that you're supposed to do it. If you want to get jacked, you want to get strong, you know, squat this way. We were told that, you know, squats would roll your whole body. Squats and milk, squats and milk. So, you know, we did that stuff to where we would take a 10 rep set, take it till it got really fatiguing, rack it, and then do as many rest pause reps as we had to, to get to get to 20. But we didn't really rack it. We weren't supposed to rack it. The whole idea was that you didn't rack it till you got to 20. So, you know, you, we might get to where we were taking five, seven, eight seconds, maybe 10 seconds between reps to get those last rep or two. And then, you know, once you could successfully get to the 20 with, with less work, you know, you knew you could, you could add weight. This is how we were taught to train. Um, and it's not for everyone. But the thing with this sort of technique, it, it's not something that you need to be doing large amounts of. It's stuff you should do if you're going to use it on a final set. And you should still try to maintain good form when doing it. And you need to be aware of your safeties and limitations. Okay. You need to have safety arms to play. If it's in any exercise to where you can get pinned under the bottom, you need to have appropriate strength spotters if you're going to use spotters who know what they're doing. So squats, that would probably be side spotters. You would not, I would never advocate a person squat heavy with a single rear squatter. I don't like that ever. Not a fan. I think it's dangerous. Should always squat with side spotters or use the safety arm. So don't. <laughs> don't do it at all, right? Don't use spotters unless they're side spotters, so on and so forth. Um, to always have safety arms in place if it's something you can get pinned on. Exercises you can't, it's not as big of a deal, right? Pull-ups, curls, things, things like that. It actually lends itself really easy to those sort of exercises. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.